creating a login system for a game might be a pretty challenging task, especially if you don't have any backend experience. Fortunately, there is a great PlayFab service that helps us with that completely for free. In this video, I'll create with you a nice login, register and password reset screen with a handy system that listens for tab and return to either change fields or to submit. In another video, I will show you how to implement all online features into our newly created login screen. Let's start. So here I have a simple box where I want to create a new login screen. Let's start with some input fields. Right click on the parent object in hierarchy, select UI, input field. I'll change the source image to a rounded rectangle and its size a bit. Now name this object mail and click on this arrow to show its children. I'll change the placeholder text also to mail so that player will know how to fill out the form. Then let's duplicate our object, move it, rename it to password and also change its placeholder to password. When I will now run the game, you can see how we can click on both input fields and type something. The problem is that the password field should have stars instead of the plain text to hide what user is typing. Simply stop the game, click on the password object and here in content type select password. Also make sure that in the mail object you select email address as a content type. Great! Now let's create our first button. Right click on the parent object, UI and select button. Again, first I'll style it a bit by changing the source image and its color to blue. I'll also click on this arrow, select text, change it to login and change its font, size to 16 and color to white. Finally, don't forget to rename our button object to login. If you'd like to learn more about buttons in Unity UI, check out my other video. Of course, these three objects are great already, but we need to create a way for our player to register. Usually, when you click register, you transfer to much bigger form, but in this case, I think we can reuse our previous fields. Simply duplicate our newly created button, move it, rename it to register, change its color and change its text to register and login. Great! The last missing button is password recovery. Again, because we already have an email field, we can use that to reset passwords. And the only thing we need to do is to create a new button. Duplicate register button, move it, rename it to reset, change its color and finally its text to reset password. To finish creating UI elements, I'll quickly create a new text object that will be placed below our login box. The purpose of this is to post some messages after a successful action or error code to tell the user what went wrong. Ok, let's test everything out. Launch the game, click on some of the buttons that obviously don't do anything yet and try to input some data, email and password. As you can see, all fields work as intended but we have another rather unsatisfying thing going on. To change input fields, we need to click them using a mouse cursor. If you often log in on a computer, you know that usually you can do that quicker using tab key to switch input and also return key to submit your login and password information. Let's fix that. First, we need to make sure that Unity properly assigns navigation order. You can quickly check that by clicking any UI element and clicking Visualize Navigation. You will see those small yellow arrows that show you which element is next in the navigation. In this case, everything looks fine, but in your arrows might look messy, 
so try to tweak navigation settings or even set them to explicit and assign objects manually. Now, time to create a new script. Select parent object, add component, and create a new script called change input. At the very top, type using unityengine.ui to work with the UI system and using unityengine.eventSystems to control navigation. Create a new variable, event system, system. And in the start method, type system equals event system dot current. System variable will store some useful data, like for example, which UI element is currently focused and which is next in the navigation order. In the update method, create a new simple if statement that will listen for tap key presses and inside of it, let's find the next navigation item. Type selectable next equals system dot current selected game object dot get component type of selectable dot find selectable on down. That line basically gets the next selectable component from the currently selected. Then check if next does not equal null and if so, simply select it by typing next.select. Great! Now run the game and try to press the tab key. The reason why we get an error is because we don't have anything selected at start. To easily fix this, at the beginning of the class, create a new variable public selectable first input. And in the start method, type first input that select. We can also add a go up action that will be triggered using a shift plus tab shortcut. Simply select our whole if statement, copy and paste it here at the end, type here else and change the first if statement to get key down tab and input that get key key code that left shift. Lastly, tweak this script a bit, so rename next to previous and instead of find selectable on down, type find selectable on up. Save, go back to Unity and make sure to assign the correct input field to your script. Now test out everything by running the game and by clicking tab and shift tab on your keyboard. To make selected fields a bit more prominent, stop the game, select both input fields and change their selected color to something darker. You can do the same for the buttons. Now run the game and test out how easy it is to navigate using only the keyboard. The last very easy thing I'll add is a return submit. That way, the player won't need to press the login button using a mouse. Go back to our script and below first input, type public button submit button. Then in the update, create one more if statement that this time will check if the user pressed return key. If so, let's simulate button click. Simply type submit the button that on click that invoke i'd also suggest to type debug.log button pressed because that way you won't see a button click animation great now go back to unity assign the correct button to our script and run the game you'll see that you can fill out our input fields use tab to go to the next one and finally, press return to submit login info. Be sure to check out the next part where I take this UI and turn it into a fully working online service. Also, check out my new CocoCo Discord and subscribe for future Unity UI videos. See you soon!